Now, when it comes to maybe getting yourself a life coach, <laughs> thought about that ever? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Perhaps we Someone should tell ask. Tell you what to do. Yeah, <laughs> we should ask for this guy, the Hollywood megastar, leading politician, and officially the muscliest man in the universe. I mean, the point is, you're never going to argue with his advice. That's the thing. <laughs> uh, we're talking, of course, about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, he's written a new book. It's got loads of advice on how to be successful, and he's been sharing some of his wisdom with our entertainment correspondent, Colin Patterson. Arnold Schwarzenegger, you will see the BBC has sent along its muscliest correspondent to interview you. When you see a body like mine, what do you feel? Is it pity or do you see potential? Extraordinary. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'm just amazed about your deltoids. <laughs> My what? And the pectoral muscles. Mm -hmm. And the arms, the triceps, the biceps, the brachialis. And the abdominals. It's really amazing. <laughs> and how you can cover it all up <laughs> with a simple shirt. I mean, if people would just know what is underneath this shirt, it's like <laughs> unbelievable, really amazing. So I'm glad that they sent you. I think I'm blushing, I can't believe it. Yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're in a very strange situation because of the actor's strike. We can't talk about your movies. <clears throat> Does this mean that I have to do your catchphrase today? What's the rules there? You can go and say, get to the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> you can say, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm very happy that I've had a great movie career. I'm very happy that I have done some great action movies and that I was able, because one of the rules that I talk about in the book is don't listen to the naysayers. So when they said to me, you would never be a comedy star. Twins. I said, I want to be a comedy star. I think I have a sense of humor. I think I can do it. And they said, no, we are not that crazy. We're not going to go and invest money in something we don't know about. We know that you're making a lot of money at the box office for your huge action movies and science fiction movies, futuristic movies. Uh, that's what we invest in. And then luckily I had someone, again, someone that helped me, Ivan Reitman, that decided that he can uh, develop a project called Twins. My name is Julius and I'm your twin brother. Oh, obviously. The moment I sat down, I thought I was looking into a mirror. We are not identical twins. <gasps> oh, no? No. Well, I wouldn't be too sure, pal. I don't Those care. comedy I movies started brother. making more money than the action movies. You. you are here to talk about your book, Be Useful, and it is getting great reviews in unexpected places. The Guardian newspaper is not known normally for its love of Republican politicians, and they say that it is the improvement guide that actually works. Fantastic. Well, I tell you that we have had uh, the most unbelievable uh, response and reaction to the book. And uh, it's one of those things, you know, that I did not dream of, to be a motivational speaker or to write motivational books or anything like that. Because when I grew up, all I wished was just to be the most muscular man in the world and to get into movies and to make millions of dollars. And then after that, a lot of new dreams came about and a lot of new kind of goals came about. And one of them was, uh, you know, I found out that people really needed to be motivated and uh, people were looking to me for answers and uh, they admired what I, was, what I have accomplished. And so I saw there an opening and I saw there a need and they started developing that, and that's how this book came about. And you speak in the book about lows that you've had and how you came back from them. There'll be people watching this program this morning in you know, dreadful situations in their life. How did you come back from your lows? Well, I want to mention that the, because it's very important because so many times people read about my uh, successes. They read about the movies that made hundreds of millions of dollars, and they read that I won the governorship and ran 
the fifth largest economy in the world and how did Arnold do all that and how did he become the greatest bodybuilder of all times and all that stuff. That's all true, but I mean, on the way to get there, there were tremendous defeats and there were tremendous losses. Is self-help a dirty word at all? Well, I think that we need a combination of helping ourselves being motivated ourselves, but also to get help from the outside. 5.8 million people voted for me. So this is 5.8 million people that helped me become governor. So how can I call myself a self-made man, right? It's, it's bogus, it doesn't exist. So this is why I want to explain in the, in the book that we all need help and we should reach out for help. And as soon as you realize that, then you also recognize the fact that you also got to help other people. And so I talk about that, you know, what did it take when I was beaten the first time in bodybuilding and I became second in the Mr. Universe contest, you know, and I was crying all night, devastated. I just went to America, I didn't speak the language, I was alone over there, I was just beaten, uh, you know, I felt like a loser and all of that stuff. And so it, I had to kind of come back from that and I learned from those kind of mistakes and I learned from those kind of uh, periods when I was on the ground and I realized, I said, Arnold, you're not a loser. You lost this competition. Losers stay down, but winners always get up. And even on, on personal losses, you know, like my marriage, the mistakes that I've made, um, you have to recognize those mistakes. You have to be responsible for those mistakes. You cannot go and blame someone else for it. And I talk about that in the book, you know, take responsibility, take ownership of those mistakes that you've made and learn from that and then come back and be a better person. One thing you're never going to be able to do is become US president because you have to be born in the United States. How much of an annoyance is that to you? You know, it's, it's not really uh, because I feel like I would make a great president, uh, but I feel at the same time that everything that I've accomplished was because of America. So the only thing that I can't do, which is run for president, I'm not going to complain about that. In the 80s, you had these stars who could open films from their names, Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Van Damme, Bruce Willis. We don't get that nowadays. Why is that? Well, I hope that my son-in-law, Chris Pratt, doesn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> exactly. Well, and you, you're right. It's, it's, I think because the stars that are being developed today is much more based on the franchise. Listen, people around Britain will be waking up. This could be the first thing they see. Can you give them one bit of advice for this day. If you wake up, don't think. Just go and exercise. And after you're through with your exercising and your life cycle riding or bicycle riding or running or whatever you do for exercise, then after that you start thinking. Arnold Schwarzenegger, thank you very much. Thank you. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Wow. Still, wow. Still got it. It's definitely still got it. Yeah. I like that advice. Don't think, just exercise. I mean, let's say, if you're going to take advice from anyone, that's the man who can convince you that that is the way to do it. Yeah, and in his book, he talks very honestly about quite some quite big mistakes he's made mm. and decisions just to try and rebuild and come back again. Properly I will not, inspirational. I will not accept that Kindergarten Cop <laughs> was a mistake at all. <laughs> One of his best films. Neither would he. He exactly. th yeah, he says they're all great because they made money. I love this, by the way. Yeah. Not at all intimidating. <laughs> no. Uh